Uh, very good afternoon to you all. Thanks once again for watching Analyst Insights. On this program, we are discussing our capital markets, mostly focusing on our local capital markets and all issues related to investing. Today, I'm joined by colleagues and fellow analysts, and uh, I'll say welcome to Marvin. Thank you for inviting me to show. It's always a pleasure to be, to be around. And uh, Rufaro, usual guest. Thank you for having me. All right, gentlemen, so we have a few things that we want to discuss. But before we dive into that, maybe just a quick roundup of how the markets have actually traded in the last um, uh, week, where we are seeing generally the markets have been uh, depressed for the better part of the week, with uh, the key indices actually uh, going down by uh, as much as 21% uh, uh, for the ZSC top 10. And the all share was down 16%, with uh, the top 15 down 18.5%. This selling pressure uh, being um, brought about by the limited Zim dollar liquidity on the market. In terms of activity, we saw about 10 billion Zimbabwe dollar of uh, trades taking place on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, and just above a million United States dollars of activity are uh, taking place on the Victoria Falls Exchange. Um, when you look at the major uh, trading there, so we have got uh, yeah, Delta, DZ, and Econet leading the pack on the Zimbabwe Stock Exchange, or at least Simbisa, Insco, and National Foods had uh, the biggest trades of the week, with uh, Simbisa weighing in with uh, around 620,000 uh, United States dollars of trade for the week. We are looking at the parallel market versus the auction. You, we are seeing that both markets are actually turning. Uh, we are looking at a rate of under five thousand Zimbabwe dollars at, uh, on the on the auction, and uh, six thousand five hundred on the parallel market rate. With actually tr some trades actually happening closer to six thousand. There's been some resistance, obviously, on the rate, especially on the parallel market. But slowly, we are seeing the rate sort of coming off as the liquidity uh, situation bite. In sympathy, we're also seeing the markets, the stock market also coming off, as I've already highlighted uh, from that graph. We are seeing the um, all share index actually um, losing some steam in line with what we're seeing on the power market activity, mostly because of uh, limited in dollar uh, circulation on, on the market. Uh, the top movers and shakers for the week are uh, on the movers. We had um, uh, mostly. Uh, medium cap and small caps, Kafka, Nampek, and Masimba being the top movers. While when you look at uh, the followers, we're mostly your blue chips. I think this is probably because of a uh, sell-off, people trying to raise some uh, Zimbabwe dollars, and it's easier to do that with the, with the blue chips. And as the sell-off is taking place, it's actually affecting even the valuations on the market where the US dollar market capitalization figures have actually come off in a big way. Delta is now valued at uh, 393 million USD, 233 million rather for Econet and uh, FBC, just around 100 million. So, um, gentlemen, uh, the activity that we are seeing on the market, um, when are we going to see a uh, stop in? To this or maybe a 10 in the market uh, bearing in mind that we are still more than 30 days away from an election and also this policy of trying to uh, stimulate single activity do you think uh, the authorities are uh, winning uh, is it a hit is it a miss uh, in terms of, a, of as a policy measure now Marvin, we can start off with you well i think it can only at the moment, we can say it's temporary. Uh, it's serving the purpose. Uh, we needed some some sanity and okay. maybe some stability. Okay. Uh, things were really getting heated, so it should be celebrated somehow. But also, we need to ask: Is it sustainable? Is it a sustainable way of managing the economy? Is it a sustainable way also of maybe of growing the economy? So, in the temporary uh, um, period, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's something that is worth celebrating. We can't celebrate when maybe the rates continue to come up. In as much as we can talk about uh, the liberalization of the, of, the, of the exchange rate regime, but also there has to be some safety nets um, 
you know, vulnerabilities from a, from our public, you know, in terms of our public entities as well as even the generality of the public. Uh, there are a lot of vulnerable people in the economy, vulnerable institutions, public enterprises, um, hospitals, who need maybe to be able to, to run with uh, supported budgets maybe stemming from the 2022 to 2023 budgets. And as was not, as did it, which something didn't happen, uh, the budget wasn't reviewed. The review is going to come up after the elections. So where would they have, would they have the supporting budgets to run their operations? So somehow they are running on budgets which are on cash flows or maybe on budget budgetary constraints from stemming from the last last budget and, and pronouncement. So somehow they are to rein in the, the, the rate. So, so it's actually, which it should be celebrated, but we need to move beyond maybe um, having short-term policies that they attend to short-term um, crisis. Let's build maybe craft long-term policies, which can also not only attend to the short-term uh, situation, but also the long-term um, repercussions of whatever we could have instituted in the short term. Alfar, you want to weigh in? Yeah, so I have a different take. I don't think there's anything um, worth celebrating. Um, I, I, I think that this is... Um, nothing fundamentally has changed in terms of um, fiscal discipline uh, or monetary policy discipline. Um, we seem to be we doing what we always do when the rate runs away, which is um, take aggressive policy action to constrain some dollar liquidity and rein in the rates. And typically um, the rate then pulls back and we have stability for a few months. And then we go back to uh, business as usual, which is um, fiscal and monetary indiscipline. So I, I haven't seen any evidence that we have um, adopted serious reform um, that's going to um, change the long-term outlook of, of the Zindan. So, you know, it's, I think certainly for people thinking um, in a trading or speculative mindset, you know, um, it's relevant that um, the rates are lower and, you know, um, on the ZSC sh shares are cheaper. I think, you know, if you look at a blue chip like Delta, um, a few weeks ago, it was trading at north of $4,000 a share. It's trading at about half that at the moment. And it's an opportunity for those who are liquid in this um, tight liquidity environment to pick up uh, bargains um you know on the zsc but the long-term outlook hasn't changed in my view so what would you like to see happening for you maybe to uh, maybe change your view and to be more uh, positive and optimistic uh every week or whenever the also market uh, funds are availed 20 million uh, only Paltry amounts are being uh, taken up. Uh, probably that's what Mal Malvin is uh, mm -hmm. alluding to. There's maybe something with taking that there's so so much money that's on the table, but uh, um, the takers are few. Is do you see that as as positive? What would you want to see happening? So 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 so. Above uh, and, ab uh, and above I, I, that, the, the sense that I get when I look at those auction numbers is that it's being de deliberately managed to give us that perspective. Mm -hmm. um, so, 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 so one of the things that I think um, the government needs to do um, to rebuild faith and confidence in the currency is to simply do what they've already said. They've spoken at length about fiscal discipline and monetary discipline. They should just act on what they've said. And when you uh, stop printing, um, the results uh, become obvious to everybody after a certain amount of time that actually the liquidity is not there. You don't have to make a lot of noise about it. Um, and, uh, you know, every all the uh, players in the economy will actually see that the state is behaving differently vis-a-vis okay. -vis this model. And, you know, that, and, and so, 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 you know, Unfortunately, this tight liquidity, it's not um, a natural tight liquidity from uh, austerity. What, what it is, we know that um, exporters, for example, have not been paid their Zim dollar 
retentions. We know that government contractors have not been paid uh, for goods and services that um, they've already rendered. So it's artificial, right? It's it, it's staged, it's managed. And, you know, so we know that on the other side of this, whether it's 30 days from now, 60 days, or in three months, <coughs> that liquidity is going to come into the market. And, you know, the um, outlook for the dollar is not great. You know, if if we if we didn't know these things about you know export retentions and government contracts and that sort of thing, then we would have something to celebrate. But we know that this is staged. Okay, all right. And uh, Marvin, what are you seeing on the marketplace, or how are transacting te- taking place? Um, which currency and how does that sit? Um, with uh, I mean, when you look at the policy that government is trying to. Uh, push uh, without maybe uh, you know appearing to be to to be getting into a debate with the pharaoh. No, no, look, yes. that's that's good. You know, as analysts, you know, we should debate. We should debate. And the reason why there's um, a market is because there's always a buyer yes, and a sir. seller. Yeah. A seller is saying, "No, this thing is run hard. I don't want it anymore." But you are the buyer, like, ah, I, I like it. <laughs> so I think as analysts, we should not just. It's good to have debate. <laughs> So right, yeah. Right. So you can. Thank you for that question. Yeah. Well, look, I I do, you know, with, with besides just de- debating, I do agree with you to say, look, you know what, um, it's a it's a sort of bit of a deliberately managed mm-hmm. uh, regime in the short term, yes. uh, which maybe speaks to some manipulation, mm-hmm. and it's not a conspiracy theory. We feel yeah. it, and we have been we have traveled this 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 path before. Yes. Yeah. So it's just maybe, uh, you know, we recycling the same story. Mm-hmm. But having said that. We we also need to maybe to say look the take away the positives from from the current space mm-hmm. and uh, what I also may allude to is that look seeing that the Zim dollar has really not been really not been available at the moment mm-hmm. so all those all those US dollars mm-hmm. that put that people had put on under their pillows they they're being released into the market they are being released into the formal system right now transactions are start are starting to happen in USD because look whereas at some point, people just maybe um, hiding their US dollars. Mm-hmm. So it was yes, we know the the the, the characteristics of money and the principles and the purposes of money. Mm-hmm. It's transactional and store of value, but largely in our economy, the USD was now just become more of a store of value, mm-hmm. which is not just the sole purpose for any currency. Mm-hmm. It had to come to, to actually fulfill that transactional role. Mm-hmm. And now we're seeing because there is people don't have a lot of ZW at their disposal, which were they willing it to dispose of. Mm-hmm. At whatever rates, mm-hmm. at whatever cost, even mm-hmm. it, sometimes when it didn't make sense, mm-hmm. you know, so actually people are losing more value because they just wanted to dispense off with the with the Zimbabwean dollar. But right now, people are starting transactions are really happening in USD. So it's reflected maybe in various statistics to say, like, what, even from the listed companies, they are getting more of their revenue in USD as mm-hmm. compared to the Zimbabwean dollar. Mm-hmm. So it's actually good. Whereas they were going to be forced to go onto the auction market, mm-hmm. they can retool, they can capitalize whether it's capex or whatever. Without mm-hmm. necessarily having to go to the bank or to the to the auction market, mm-hmm. so it, it it was also maybe sort of forced people to transact in US dollars, tax in US dollars, and all that. So it's, well, the taxes are now being paid in Zim dollars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've had, we've chopped and changed our policy there. You know, that that's it's good as well because <laughs> so what it does is we're winning that they're forcing people to actually bring out their Zim dollars, their, their USD. So to a certain extent, with any policy, mm. we will agree. Uh, not to say I'm imposing that you should yeah. agree. No, 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 policy, no, I hear you, but the, I, I, there's always I, I, a contagion. There's always collateral damage. So, 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 so for so me, the litmus test is is the following. Um, if you received um, a windfall today hmm. of 100 million Zim dollars hmm. as a, 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 bank, a bank credit, a credit, you get a notification and you've got this money in your bank account um, and you let's assume you don't have an immediate use for it or immediate need for it. Are you going to be, because of the current uh, policy action, comfortable just sitting on it in Zim dollars? Or you're going to make a plan to ring fence it from inflation? Mm-hmm. What are you going to do? So so this is this is a good question. And it also speaks to say, look, these are there are various maybe supporting um, interventions mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. which have not really been instituted or implemented mm-hmm. by our authorities, not mm-hmm. just our authorities, because it doesn't take only 
our authorities to make our economy tick. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at other players within the economy, our ecosystem, especially the financial service sector, mm -hmm. the banking intermediaries and other stakeholders. Have we created maybe instruments where, or are we, can we be able to actually maybe give people, uh, say, inflation indexed uh, uh, investment instruments, which are money market, money market instruments? Can mm -hmm. we do that? Because if there is going to be an invest in a money market investment instrument where I can lock in my hundred million dollars mm -hmm. and still get a good decent return, for as long as that investment is actually tracking maybe inflation or is tracking maybe the movement of the exchange rate, I'm not going to risk my money giving some guys on the streets to go and look for US dollars for me. Mm -hmm. I'm simply going to lock into that investment, but it has not happened. And the okay. banks have been so, some banks have been so lazy not to think about maybe generating this kind of investments, originating mm -hmm. this kind of investment. But maybe they argue and say, what inflation, what CPI number are you going to use? Because now we've got the blended in, uh, inflation. Mm -hmm. How useful would that be for you to create a CPI linked uh, singular investment? So are you happy to link it to 79 or 80% uh, when you know actually the Zoom dollar is actually losing much more? So it's to the extent that, uh, look, we I'm not exonerating the investment bankers and uh, us market players, but the policy environment also is making it very difficult because you want this thing called CPI. Mm -hmm. And they are redefining it in a way that makes it very difficult. I know the companies actually... Yeah, grappling with that issue in terms of what CPI number you're going to use to adjust your numbers for inflation. And there's a recent uh, ACA uh, winter school where they were actually thinking of creating a pseudo uh, CPI or something that they could use that could be used by by, by, by the firm. But anyway, maybe let's take the discussion uh, to, to, to a different platform. And um, uh, where one of our listed companies, uh, maybe we just move move away a little bit from the macros. Mm -hmm. uh, it was exciting though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, 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 we'll go back maybe just to dilute things a little bit. Yeah. Um, Econet, 25 years. Oh, what, what, what are your memories of, as, a, as an analyst um, of this business and uh, this investment <coughs> over the years? So Econet is a fantastic story. Uh, of uh, entrepreneurship, of tenacity and persistence, of wealth creation. Um, you know, I think that, you know, certainly uh, f from a business perspective, uh, Strive is uh, one of Zimbabwe's best and brightest. Um, and really the question that I feel um, we don't ask enough in our market is how, why don't we have 10 more? Mm -hmm. Strives. So, what do we need to do for us to help? You know, uh, and, and, and and I think uh, Econet or in scores or those. Uh, you know, so 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 we need to we need to create uh, a macroeconomic environment that makes us um, a destination of choice for people who are entrepreneurial, who have risk appetite, who want to build businesses, um, and I think that. Um, the economic experience um, is actually well, one of the reasons why it's remarkable is because in the early days, um, the government was actually the biggest obstacle to the success of that <laughs> business. <laughs> you know, um, Strive actually spent um, years uh, in the courts trying to get licensed. And, you know, so anybody who is thinking about building a business uh, where that is regulated that requires government sign off, you know, when they see things like that, it gives them trepidation. It makes them think, yeah, maybe I should build this in Zambia instead or, you know, an, an easier market. And I think, you know, so when we look at the economic success, success story, I think it should make us introspect and um, ask ourselves why we don't have many more. Because if we had um, 10 more businesses like Econet, um, certainly our GDP would be significantly higher and our employment numbers would be significantly better and we would be much better off as a country if we have 10 more um, economics like businesses. So I think that's it, it, the 25 year anniversary is an opportunity for us to reflect on um, what we can do to, to have so that in the next 25 years we have 100 uh, businesses of that nature uh, built in this country. 
So I, I want you to um, weigh in, but as you do that, uh, there's a point that Rufaro has raised about uh, maybe our, it speaks to the ability of us attracting capital and uh, foreign direct investment. So when you've got a homegrown company that's able to, that's founded and within 25 years, it grows to a certain level. How important is such a business in, in this whole um, issue about uh, uh, attracting capital into the country and uh, foreign direct investment um, and maybe just having some sort of ambassadors at corporate levels that could possibly sell the same story. Uh, the, uh, certainly, you know what, uh, if there's anything, what uh, Strive has done is been a very good ambassador for our country, not just maybe as in, in the general sense, but also from a corporate or entrepreneurship perspective. Uh, uh, um, a lot of investors had invested in, have invested in Econet. Uh, they have generated good returns over the years, over those two and a half years, two and a half, um, 25, 25 yeah. years. Um, in terms of investment attraction, uh, uh, you know, we have seen Econet being supported by um, multi-global institutions, mm -hmm. uh, both on the, from the technology front as well as in, from the financial sales fund. We look at Africa's Bank having been involved in the economic success in the economic success story. Um, as to what maybe we should do, I think um, Rufaro spoke a lot about the, the the macroeconomic ecosystem that is supportive for maybe in the creation of maybe ten more Econets. But mm -hmm. what we have not really I think what I can say you 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 skipped mm. is also a focus, not just on the on the eco supporting ecosystem, but on the entrepreneurs themselves. Mm -hmm. I feel when you have a a, a, a generation mm -hmm. which maybe um, gets inspiration from the so-called uh, bingas, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you you look at what these bingas have created, what impact are they create are they have they had on the social landscape. Mm -hmm. You know, to people, not just before we even talk about the business landscape, mm -hmm. you can't speak a lot besides them spending in nightclubs. Mm -hmm. So we look at maybe the entrepreneur, the type of the caliber of entrepreneurs that we've had. Mm -hmm. You, we cannot blame the economy or the macroeconomy system when you've got a caliber of entrepreneurs like that. Mm -hmm. So it speaks to say, look, if if strive with the binga ideology, mm -hmm. if strive with the binga vision. I don't think we have an equity that we have now. So it's what I would speak to. I, 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 don't, I don't have a problem with bingas. I mean, and to, to, you know, <laughs> I, I'm going to push back. I also don't have a problem with bingas. I'm going to push back. I'm just bingas. making your own debate here. Okay, <laughs> fine. Try, try, talk a little bit about them and then. So and let me finish. In yeah, right, strive, yeah. strive has a private jet. That's 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 what bingas do, is it, is it not? It, it's okay. <laughs> he's justified when he's created. Uh, yeah. Value, value, not mm -hmm. only to himself, but mm -hmm. to other people, mm -hmm. not only to other people, to other corporates, mm -hmm. to the government. He has paid a lot of tax. Mm -hmm. These bingers, I bet they don't. They 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 evade tax most of them. Mm -hmm. So what I'm trying to say is, looking at, let's not monocode our generation of entrepreneurs. We had the stuff that strive faced the challenge that he, uh, he faced. They actually, they actually, you know. The current challenge that we have, I think, they fell into a shadow. Ninety-eight when he listed, mm -hmm. we had um, DRC, we had the office on the just beyond, you know, the pounds and all that. Mm -hmm. We had an economic meltdown. Mm -hmm. If you look at that period, ninety-eight to around maybe two thousand and two, we had a lot of listings. Mm -hmm. I asked this question: How many listings has maybe the millennials brought into this world? <laughs> so I, I think you, so, you, you raised you raised a good point, but. The, the 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 counter um, argument is to say the reason why we we talk about these so called and 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 I do take your point that a lot of these this what you the mingas that you're describing are people who haven't built businesses like Econet they are just speculators and, and arbitrage mm -hmm. players tenderpreneurs that sort of and the reason why they are the most prominent lot in terms of that. If, we, if a young person was you know, looking for role models of people who are successful, they are much more likely to encounter these sort of individuals than, than a strive. And, and the reason why that's the case is because the macroeconomic environment, in, environment does not reward um, uh, corporate 
people who build corporates and formal businesses, right? You know, um, the last number from Zimstat says that 76% of our economy is dollarized and mostly informal. So, um, people... So if you're going to capture that money, you have to be informal. And, and, and so the kind of personality that thrives in the informal sector is your dealers, your arbitrators, your tenderpreneurs. Those are the people who thrive in that. Your, your uh, people who, are built, who want to build things that involve raising serious amounts of capital and listing and corporate action, um, they don't do well in such an environment, which is why um, Strive is not based in Harare. He's, he, for the longest time, he was based in Johannesburg. Now he's based in London because that environment suits him better in terms of doing big deals, raising money. Straight, straight, straight things. Exactly. Mm. So I believe if we actually reform our economic policy and we change the macroeconomic environment so that it rewards uh, people who do things um, properly, uh, you know, who actually set up formal businesses that are registered for uh, t tax purposes um, and aspire to list you know, if, if we create an environment, then those people will thrive. And the people who young p people look up to will be your entrepreneurs who've built businesses that are listed and that are worth, you know, millions of dollars and it's legitimate and it's clean. So so I think, you know, I wouldn't judge the um, Bingas too harshly <laughs> because we've set up a, an environment in which they, they, they're going to thrive. And, you know... Uh, the, you know, analysts like us are, are, are poorer than these. <laughs> Whereas in the real world, the investment bankers are some of the wealthiest people in town, which is not the case in, in our country. Yeah, interesting. Maybe a, a last word from you. Uh, so that uh, economic uh, story we are talking about and the whole FDI uh, story, how are they linked? What, what needs to be done? And what we, can we possibly learn from uh, the experience of, of the likes of Econet in the quest to try and bring in FDI into the country? I think, you know, like, just like Econet, there's also with other, you know, unicorns mm -hmm. rolled over. If mm -hmm. you look at Tesla, uh, mm -hmm. if you look at, um, yeah, you know, other, other unicorns, they've been supported by, you know, several stakeholders, even government. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to take a deliberate uh, policy where we identify the game changes for our economy, possible mm -hmm. game changes for our economic trajectory. Because when these winners win, it's not only the entrepreneurs who are going to benefit. So we need to take a deliberate uh, step towards maybe, it's, if it's going to be on a quarterly basis or mm -hmm. an annual basis, looking at the same way we, we have public tenders, you know, for supply, mm -hmm. uh, for spe certain specific needs of government or maybe any entities. Mm -hmm. We need to actually do sort of maybe I can say beauty period where we can actually identify these big game changers which are worth maybe national support. So if they're going to be accorded national project status, mm -hmm. if Mureza uh, Auto Company is going to be awarded, uh, um, you know, national project status, if Invictus is going to be afforded, accorded to national project status, we need to actually get behind these entrepreneurs and these projects. Because for as long as we are going to actually stand in their way, Mm -hmm. We are not going to create other economies because if really, for some reason, if maybe our judiciary had been really manipulated at the time, we would not have had the economy that we have. Mm -hmm. the way. Yes, challenges were there for, for economy. So likewise, we can do more. We need to find maybe interventions that can actually uh, put in place to be able to support, uh, give a support structure for, for the economics, economic, uh, ecosystem that can actually support other economies out there, which are not coming to fruition because of maybe a lot of obstacles. Yeah. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Uh, uh, there you have it, our viewers. And um, again, I would say happy 25th anniversary to uh, Econet. And the overlying sentiment that is coming from my colleague analyst here is one that says we need to support entrepreneurs as a, a country because when they win, we all win. So that's the uh, kind of message that we are getting here. And that also, they are our ambassadors. When um, the foreign investor and in foreign capital that we want, whenever they come to Zimbabwe, they are always looking at which ones are homegrown uh, companies and 
what has been the experiences and uh, how they are able to uh, create value because if a local can't make it it's actually very scary uh, to a, a foreign entity uh, who is trying to get into the country thanks so much for watching the show uh, send in your comments and your views and uh, we I'm sure everything that we are trying to do is to develop our local capital markets and our economy as we do that have a good day and uh, bye bye for now